The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too familiar. Welcome to my brother, my brother, me, and advice show from the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, Travis McElroy. I'm your sweet baby brother, 30 under 30, Griffin McElroy. Listen, I know it's early. It, it just turned October. It just, oh, tick, 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 just rolled over into October. But I know what next year's theme is going to be. Oh, Jesus Christ. Can we, maybe, at what point do we... I haven't collaborated with, like, even anybody this year. Not even one time a little Wait, bit. you've worked with us on several things. That yeah. doesn't fucking count anymore. We are the same thing at this point. We haven't mm. reached across the boundaries to other people to create new art. In you, with the, with the umlaut over it, art. We haven't collaborated, and let's stop fucking kidding ourselves. I yes. collaborated once. With you whom? On what? My friend Jerry. On what? A sandwich. You made a sandwich with your friend Jerry. I do actually remember that. Yeah, it was and a really, good sandwich. It yeah. was a good one. Uh, you shared a little piece of it. You mailed me a little uh, finger of it, and you mailed yeah. Justin a finger of it, and we had a great meal together. Over well, I had, a, I had a piece of bread with some peanut butter on it, and Jerry mm. had a piece of bread with some jelly on it, and we kind of high-fived in midair with yeah. our pieces of bread. It was good. It was a friendship sandwich. And you sandwich. made it, and we called it a Travis and Jerry sandwich, and mm-hmm. you can find it at most um, grocery stores called Uncrustables. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but here's the thing. In the past... Our themes have been uh, something that we are telling everyone in our audience to do, right? They are general messages of like guidance for the year. I'm gonna, I've got something a little different in mind for 2019. This is very specific for my brother, my brother, and me, and it's gonna change our show forever. Are you ready? I guess so. Like, I yeah. have plans like later today, and so I'm not sure I'm in the like right space to get my life changed. Okay. Can I can Are sidebar? You sidebar ready? Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Sidebar with juice. What juice? Yeah. What are we gonna do if it's shitty? The theme? Yeah. What if we do if it's shitty? Because he's I talking about not, it like it's so good. I didn't approve talking about this right now. Mm. Like this is breaking my heart right now. I don't know. What am I? Like, it's so early. It's I have so Are you yeah. ready? Okay. 20 equine teen. This year we buy a horse. I love it. Uh-huh. <laughs> you got to hear the rest of the idea, too. Yes. Yes, yeah. and. Yes, and. Has a cousin named. I love it, but. We buy <laughs> the horse. It, but. We buy the horse, and we set up a 24-7 webcam on the horse so that people can go and look at the horse whenever they want to. All right, uh, seven issues. Uh huh. One. Seven, wow, seven issues. Okay, and let's yeah, go. it took One. me it took me less than seven seconds to generate them. So. It's, I'm talking about a more than one issue per sec, but um, if we have a 24-7 webcam up on the horse, mm-hmm. people are people are going to see how bad we are at taking care of this fucking horse. Are you we, kidding me? We will keep it somewhere where there are people competent to take care of the horse. We won't That don't be... matter. That don't matter. That don't matter. People are going to be watching these feeds for little glimpses of, gl- of, of our glory as we walk in. And we're like, mm, let's pet the horse. Let's ride the horse. Let's love the horse. Let's nourish the horse with our love. And then they're uh-huh. not going to see that because I won't and you fucking won't and Justin certainly I'm... won't. No I way. might. I might. You won't. You wicked won't. If it's nearby. Number two, horses are very, very wildly, profoundly expensive. Mm-hmm. They say that the day you buy a horse is the happiest day of your life, and that's it. That's all they say, and it, <laughs> because it is story. a happy thing, but it doesn't change the fact that it's 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 profoundly expensive, Travi. Mm-hmm. I don't. Mm-hmm. I feel like there's a real. I've gotten smarter. When you're growing up, you think it's funny to joke about everything. Uh huh. Everything is a joke. Ha ha ha. As I've gotten older, I've learned, especially on this show, not everything's funny, because we've joked about things sometimes, and they happen. 
And sometimes they happen in like a, I wanted it to happen so it did Matilda way. Uh huh. And some of them happen in like a, we try to make this happen without really thinking about the repercussions of it way. And this seems to be one of those situations where I feel like we could, like someone could just show up with a horse. That's that's my worry is that the people will say, well, these guys are never going to do this on their own. I'm going to just get them a horse. Oh, I sure. see. You said that's your worry, but that was my hoped outcome. I was hoping that, that would someone happen. would buy a horse. Yeah. I want to well, buy the horse because I want to own it. I don't want a charity horse because a charity horse says I don't. I can't have this. I gotta tell I can't you, Travis. Anymore. Just to get a, t- a taste of this, I, I did just go on Craigslist to search for horses. Uh huh. In your area or in my area or what's up? In my area. Um. There are some busted ass steeds up on this service, Trav. And I know every horse is a treasure from God's blessings, but uh-huh. oh my God, there are some steeds on here, Trav, that we would not want to be sort of seen with, let alone the uh, legal owners of. There are some That's what people busted. said about Sea Biscuit, Griffin. No, Trav. I, I you just, we're yeah, Sea Biscuit is a is a is a tall glass of water compared to some of these busted gelding gentle for the family steeds. That's what this one says. Appaloosa gelding gentle for the family. I, not my fucking family. It looks awful. Oh my God. Well how pretty does your horse need to be then, Griffin? Better than this, at least better than this. This is a good, st- like, sort of here, metric. Here is how incapable <laughs> we are to own a horse. And uh-huh. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just. This is a quiz that I don't know the answer to, but I'm hit, gonna hit you, Travis. And this is a quarter horse. It's a listing in our in my region of Huntington, West Virginia. This is a nice two year old grade quarter horse, standing thirteen point three hh. Uh huh. And what's that mean? Hands high. Hands high. Okay, fair. I think yes, it's okay. horse. I think it's horse height. I think this. <laughs> I think H H H H stands for horse height, horse height, and it's a, a special. So it's like stone. You know how they say stone across the pond. Uh-huh. Uh, it's, it's, it's a horse height is just like a new unit for horses' heights. Uh, this is easy go. Okay, simple to catch in your pocket kind of horse. Um, okay. <laughs> easy going stands tied. Trav. Nope. Easy going, <laughs> stands tied. You can tie it up. It'll just hang out. Picks up all four hooves and has a nice, solid WTC. Uh, walk, trot, canter. Oh, that's good. Okay, I'll give that to you. Been yeah, what's ponied, up? Been ponied on several different occasions. I think it means it got drunk. <laughs> on pony wine. No silly business to him. Has never offered to buck, bite, kick, or rear. Do they offer? Hi. Hi. Um, I, th- I, I don't mind <laughs> if you'd like to buck or bite or kick a rear. Can be stalled or turned out on pasture. Does great either way. Ready to be started your way. I love right. it. I, I, I can see this guy going in any direction. He's a nice horse to work with and a pleasure to be around. <laughs> Asking 700 OBO. Or best offer. $700 is not very much for a horse. Uh, here's actually. what I want to say, though. On Craigslist... The listing does say $1. So maybe you're lying. Maybe you're a liar and I can't really trust anything you say about your horse. Now, Um, I found a mini horse slash pony nearby Cincinnati. A real little Sebastian type. And it says here, no kick or bite. So that's $200 offer. I I do want it to offer it because sometimes I do. (laughs) One time, the only time I've ever ridden a horse is on our old youth minister's farm. And it was, I was going bareback, no saddle on that bad boy. And it looked back at me and it said, Hey, I'd like to buck you off and hurt your wiener very badly. (laughs) And I I said, I would not like that. Oh, you're doing it. You did it. It's done. It's been done. Thank you. Thank you. Let's learn about Jesus. (laughs) The horse said this? Uh, no. Uh, oh, okay. so yeah, Trav, this is. I'm gonna work on it. I'm gonna yeah, work it's on a non-starter, it. Non-starter, but I'm gonna work on it. I'm gonna manifest it with my energy, and I'm gonna make it happen. Juice, how about that first question? Uh, yeah. So this is a an advice show. My advice to you is probably don't buy a horse unless well, you like know what you're doing, and you don't. You don't. You can learn on the spot. Like you don't start you driving after you learn spot. to drive. You can't buy a My First Horse 
a burner horse and then learn how to not let them die. What if I got a super another... old horse? Nah, it's he got you there. They're harder. <laughs> and they're more racist. So oh. that's not even the kind of horse vibe you want around your home. Mm-hmm. You want a young, open-minded horse that will offer to bite, in, but not so much that it gets weird. Yeah. They won't, it won't make it seem, it'll make it seem like it wants to know if you want it to bite you rather than making it clear that it wants to bite you. I would hate to bite you. My boyfriend recently revealed to me that he's allergic to beans and has never eaten them. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know what accent that was that you said the word beans, beans with. Beans. That's I always say beans. <laughs> my, <laughs> my boyfriend recently revealed to me he's allergic to beans and has never eaten them. While researching bean free chili recipes, he quietly but seriously asked me, what do beans taste like? <laughs> Brothers, I have tried, but I don't have the words that I hope and somewhat fear you do. How can I describe what a bean tastes like to someone who's never had them? And that's from Beanful Thinker in Oregon. Um, I can tell you mouthfeel. What's the mouthfeel of a bean? Mouthfeel of a bean is a little bit like um, mushed up like a sand, like sand. A little yeah. dirt dirt in there. Um gritty. Oh, beans. Oh, the beans are gritty. Bit yeah, gritty I think the beans. best way I could describe the mouthfeel of a bean is simply to say never as creamy as you want. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's I, you you expect it to be a certain amount of creaminess, but it's not gonna get you there. And I always want a little pop to my bean, but it more yeah. just like moo. It gives up. It gives up the ghost immediately. You know, uh, I think it's, you know, they say small potatoes. I think it's, I think a bean is kind of like a small, soft potato in terms of like a small, soft potato, I think is very good. Mm. Yeah. Now, we are kind of limiting this because I think we're thinking of like your standard, like uh, black bean, red bean, kidney bean kind of deal. But this could also be like green beans. You know, yeah. Let's, let's, you're right, Trav. Let's, let's codify this. All beans taste the same, save for. Green beans, beans, which are uh, beans that you eat inside their house, and uh-huh. lime and lima beans, which I have been trying to get the Food and Drug Administration to classify as poison for my entire life. Yes. Um, they are uh, they are yucky. I, I I would happily put the Mr. Yuck sticker on all these lima beans. They are the fucking worst. Uh, you know, uh, lima beans uh, technically are uh, poison if you consume enough of them. They contain a chemical that causes your body to create cyanide oh wow. yeah Same it's it, that's like apple seeds it's because they're so fucking gross that your body's like i would actually rather be dead than continue to eat these yucky yucky lima beans i do not care how much butter you put on them Derek. Mm-hmm. they're sure. still lima beans and they're gross so i'm gonna go ahead and produce a chemical to hurt my own body thank you thank you Derek, for this uh and of course jelly beans which tastes mm. like the opposite of beans yeah. Why haven't they made bean flavored jelly beans? Thank you. I bet you somebody has. You guys are also very limited in the I would suggest to you to get into a bean based diet because you would be shocked at how many different permutations of beans there can be. Like my famous uh black bean brownies, uh that's gonna give you a whole different appreciation for beans when you're using beans as the brownie batter. Uh, another one would be roasting the beans mm-hmm. at very hot temperatures. So it turns into something of a crunchy snack. Mm-hmm. Kind of a pop, light... Pop beans. Kind of like pop <laughs> beans. <laughs> Bean chips. Now, Justin, is this good advice for someone who is definitely allergic? I sat on my beans. Beans chips. I sat okay. on my beans. I sat but, on my beans. But our question bean asker... <laughs> okay. Very sat allergic on, to beans. I, Gonna... I sat on my beans. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, Trav, I sat on my beans. He sat right on his beans, dude. <laughs> oh, beans. no, I was going to enjoy these beans, and I sat on them, dadgummit. Mm. Mm. This is a good question. Is your boyfriend uh, allergic like through skin contact? Can your boyfriend touch beans? Because then maybe like feel if he beans. touches enough beans, he'll get the feel for the beans, and then <laughs> he can guess good. what they taste like from the feel. Yeah, Ooh. goose it up in your hand. Goose up a bunch of beans <laughs> in your hand. Imagine it's your mouth. Yeah, <laughs> with your teeth, but that's, the teeth are your fingers. Good. You can't be allergic to beans. What? I don't think you could be allergic to beans. <laughs> you I mean allergic to anything. I, I faked a Windex allergy when I worked at Blockbuster so I wouldn't have to clean. 
And I don't think you could be allergic to beans. <laughs> so wait, hold on. So to connect the two things you just said, based on the fact that you lied about being allergic to something once, you think it is yes. impossible to then be allergic to beans? No, it is, of course. I'm being silly. It's Because they're in the same family as peanuts. So, of course, you can be allergic to beans. Oh, but thank you for finally clarifying for us when you are and aren't being silly on the show. I'm just having a lot of fun. <laughs> if, you, if it sounds like I'm having a hoot and a holler, just mm -hmm. the best darn time of my life, then I'm probably joking around just having some fun. With mm -hmm. the listeners, the listeners and I get it. It's kind of yeah. a private thing. How about a Yahoo? Okay. This one was sent in by so many fucking people, it's wild. Thank you, everybody. It's Yahoo Answers user Parker who asks, Are goldfish the snack cursed? Hmm. On the first day of one of my classes, I was sat in the very front row, and I had a bag of goldfish open for me to snack on. When reaching for a pencil, I nudged the bag, and it swept the crunchy fish across the table and some onto the floor. Three mm. weeks later, I purchased another bag of goldfish, and while struggling to remove my sweater, I knocked them to the floor after only ha a handful have been eaten. Suggestions? Huh. I have, sp I have spilled two bags of goldfish crackers. Uh-huh. I'm starting to think these things are all cursed. I'm starting to think that there was a murder. Somebody fell into the goldfish, uh, you know, crunch, 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 crunchitizer at the goldfish factory. And then their angry ghost is going around and making all the bags fucking fall over. They are incredibly spillable like snack. I mean, of the snacks, they're incredibly spillable because goldfish are one of the very few snacks. And really, you won't be able to think of any of them. I think that aren't like Pepperidge Farm based, but they're a bag with a flat bottom. Oh, that's just tempting huh. fate if you think about it. You set that bag up and you're like, that's fine. It's flat on the bottom. But you wouldn't do that with fucking any other bag. You would not set any other bag up and be like, hey, bag, are you cool? And expect that bag to be cool. The goldfish <laughs> lure you into this false sense of security like, hey, we know there's a thousand of us and sure. we're in a bag, but it'll be fine. Just walk away. It's fine. <laughs> And Wait. sometimes sometimes they come in a milk carton too. And that's just trickery. That's just roguish trickery. Because I'm gonna see that in on on the shelf in the pantry and I'm gonna think Dylan left the milk out in the pantry again. Why doesn't mm. he get where this actually goes? Um and then I'm i I'm so busy yelling at Dylan, I haven't even realized the mistake that I've made, which is that they're cheesy crackers and not milk. Do you think it's the ghost of goldfish? Interesting. Every time you crunch one of them, a little ghost comes out. Uh-huh. And I try, either tries to push over its bag, but it's there's just one of them. So really, I think by the laws of physics, you have to have eaten half the bag, and then you'll have half a bag worth of goldfish ghosts who are then capable of knocking over their their partners who are still remaining, still living inside the bag. There was one day many years ago at Pepperidge Farm where uh, a well-meaning chef said, "Hi, everyone." I've made new cheese crackers, and I'd like everyone to enjoy them. They're small, and I think you're really going to like them. And the, the guy everybody at the office hates, whose name is Billup. Billup tries one, and he's like, mm, close, but I think I'd like them more if they're shaped like an uh, animal. And they're like, huh, what kind? Um, A pet. <laughs> like one of my... <laughs> <laughs> like a pet that people have, that everybody has. I wish they were shaped like pets that we have, the goldfish pets. Well, why do you want to eat? I just don't know. I just think I'd like it better if they're shaped like one of my pets. And I could eat a bunch of them in front of my goldfish that I have, my real animal goldfish. Why? Why do we want to antagonize? We, we put them in a tiny prison, give them dirt, and mm -hmm. then it's like, and also watch me eat crackers of you for yeah. your entire life. I watched a David Blaine magic trick where he did eat three goldfish. And then he did throw them all up, and everybody at the party, like Jake Gyllenhaal, freaked the fuck out. And I saw that, and I said, I would like to do that, but I want to keep them down. And I also want them to be made out of cheesy cracker stuff, because that's my shit. My boyfriend and I recently moved into a house. While mowing the lawn, my boyfriend was apparently enjoying his time in the sun and decided on a whim to mow the neighbor's front lawn as well. Hmm. We have met our neighbors briefly and shared neighborly conversation, but we really don't know each other. He didn't say anything to them about mowing their lawn, and just thought of it as a nice thing to do. I'm worried that our neighbors will be confused at best, and at worst, interpret this as a passive-aggressive comment on their lawn care. It was. 
Should we knock on the door? <laughs> okay, it doesn't say that. <laughs> That's Justin's commentary. Yeah. Um, <laughs> should we knock on the door and explain that we're not weird? That's from Civil and Cincy. Let me explain my comment. What I'm saying is, you looked at their law and said, That's long enough. Somebody should cut it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, it's good that your 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 uh, partner uh, Glee Glow from the planet Mars Eight. What is he doing? What are you do? I'd like to mow too, Launce. What are you doing? <laughs> the only way I think that you can get away with this is to have your boyfriend knock on their door and request ten dollars for having mowed yes. their lawn, and then they refuse, and he goes like, well, I never, or whatever, and then he walks away. Because if someone was just like, hey, just letting you know I mowed your lawn, I would assume some kind of intent that was about judging me or something. But if they said, like, I did it, and now I expect to be paid, I'd be like, oh, I understand this. I get what this transaction is. I just, no. what would you do if they came home, and you were in the yard, in their yard, Mowing their grass mm -hmm. with your machine at your height of grass <laughs> that you like it cut with your dirty machine? <laughs> what if they have special seed? What if they have special grass? What if they have a special... Hey, here's one. What if they like to cut their grass? That's it. Yeah, what like, if one of them is Glebe Glow from Mars 8 also, and they want to <laughs> mow at least one lawn this month? <laughs> they love that mowing their lawn, and you stole that from them. That's what if the thing. it's the if last it, good mow of the year? Oh. oh. And you've been saving up that last glass of lemonade? <laughs> You're good oh. mowing shorts. What oh. if? What if they can't mow the lawn? Because their children got shrunk down. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you no. asshole. You Look asshole. You killed their blow. freaking little kids. You mowed their little kids. You mowed all their little, little kids. Their little, you, little teenage oh, kids that shrunk oh, down accidentally. Did you, what did you think it was? A knoll? Some sort of chipmunk? No, that was their Wait. children. <laughs> How small are the children? That they're about chipmunk size. We're like, nah, this is fine. They're chip. That's they. The grass is so tall. <laughs> they have no chance. Oh we'll no! I ran over their sure. Legos. I ran over their oatmeal cream hey. pie. Hey, squad! You know that scene in Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, where they're with the aunt and they're surviving out in the backyard, and they come across an oatmeal cream pie and all start having a big snack of it. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, why the fuck was there a whole oatmeal cream? Pie? <laughs> Whole oatmeal cream pie just sitting out in their backyard. Who who was walking around in their backyard trying to go from point A to point B with their snack on oatmeal cream pie, which was normal size to them, a big teenager? And then they dropped it and they were like, ah, that's just gonna stay right there on the ground. <laughs> it's such a good question. They're so good. At what kind of dirt bag? It's like that's fucking fine. I love ants and hate snacks. Just what am I? What am I gonna do? Pick it up? Come on! <laughs> Come on with these ants, with these beautiful manicures. No way. Leave it. I'm, I'm on my way Brewer. inside. I'm Matt Brewer, and I'm a dirt bag, and I'm gonna leave that exactly where I dropped it. <laughs> Man, <laughs> also, who's playing with Legos outside? That's you know, there were some, at least one of those kids had to keep using the laser machine to shrink themselves down and eat big oatmeal cream. That's the fucking best. Like, I don't want to get squashed or mowed down, and I, like, obviously got to go to school, and I can't be, you know, one inch high while I'm doing that shit. But, guys, I got to tell you, I do miss the big oatmeal cream pie days. Do you remember the big oatmeal cream pie times? We almost got killed by a scorpion or whatever, but the big oatmeal cream pie was the best moment of my life, I think. I did very much enjoy the huge oatmeal cream pie. It, it's just, I don't, I don't. Okay. The number one thing that is wild about the oatmeal cream pie is I dropped an oatmeal cream pie outside. I'm just going to leave it all well, them's the breaks. That's why. Yeah. The other thing that's wild is that's the first ant that found it. The ant they befriend is the first ant to find this fucking thing. Are you kidding me? If I if I leave one chunk of apple, which is gross compared to an oatmeal cream pie, it's, on the, oh god, the disgusting ground, compared. Covered, covered in ants. Five seconds later, covered in ants. You tell me this thing isn't getting wrecked by ants? No way. I'm leaving this as a plot hole on the IMDb page. Let's fucking trash this flick. Yeah. Hey, how come in Honey We Shrunk Ourselves where the parents got themselves shrunk down and the parents find them, the kids aren't like, 
I'm going to grow you back, but hold up. Y'all have got to eat one of these oatmeal cream pies. <laughs> And go down in the kitchen and give their their little parents a big oatmeal cream pies. Like that seems fucked up. How come by the third movie the the Zelenskys aren't like fucking super rich? Because like Wayne could just like make an oatmeal cream pie really big and be like, hey, everybody in town, you can stay normal size, but come fucking feast on this oatmeal cream pie. I fixed starvation forever. Yeah. Anyway. <sighs> I'd love to eat that oatmeal cream pie. They used to I want it like so bad. I want a big fucking oatmeal cream pie. God, mm, <sighs> fuck that makes anything. me so so angry. I'll never I'll never get to have that. Pay any yes. price. I'm gonna make a company called Big Debbie, and it only makes big snacks <laughs> for, for big boys. For big. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Big Debbie, and I'm ready to blast your big ass hunger. <laughs> My oatmeal cream pie is the size of a whole fucking pie. Let's do this. <laughs> Open up, motherfucker. <laughs> these are my these are my jacked zebra cakes full of protein for big boys. <laughs> <laughs> and the fucking the mascot's just a ripped fucking just zebra, just jacked muscles. Come on, big boys. <laughs> you want? Are you gonna eat this Star Crunch asshole, or you want to drink some unsweetened tea? <laughs> it's October, motherfuckers. Have one of our weird pumpkin shaped <laughs> things. We're, this time it's a whole fucking pumpkin full of protein powder. <laughs> Come it's on, coward. Daddy, I'm here to fuck you up. Did I make it protein? They've all got fucking protein now. <laughs> Hell yeah. Get swole. Get swole Get with full. me, Big Debbie. But please continue to patronize my granddaughter, Little Debbie. <laughs> I, I care about her, and I'm so proud of her small business that she start. <laughs> Can you imagine being in a business meeting with little Debbie? That'd be wild. So cute. I think, think it'd go think a, a little business? something like this. <laughs> you think if you have a business meeting at Little Debbie Co. And I fuck. I love little Debbie. I know the family of little Debbie is a listener to the show, and thank you so much. I appreciate you because they sent us some little Debbies before. If you what? have, have you, have, they sent me some little Debbies for everyone. Okay. Um, if you have a business meeting at Little Debbie, do you have to serve little Debbies at the business meeting? Because one, yes, I will take a meeting at Little Debbie if those are the conditions of the uh, gathering. Second, there's some times where maybe it's not appropriate. Maybe it's not appropriate to have a big plate full of zebra uh, bars or star crunches or. Or uh, Christmas tree cakes, although those are my fucking shit, though. Oh, I really? Like I love the Swiss Christmas cake rolls. Cakes. I like the short cake oh, rolls. I like my food in a roll form. This is a fun universe that Justin's invented, though, where, uh, you know, at the McDonald's corporate headquarters, they're talking about how, uh, you know, they've seen just more and more of their, their profits be wicked away by Chipotle, and this could be yeah. the end of Ronald this year. And then and then they come in, and they do have, a uh, you know, a bunch of their nasty burgers and chicken nuggets, <laughs> anyway, and then they say, I do have to... I my I'm worth thirty million dollars, but I guess we do, we do have to eat our dirty chicken balls. <laughs> if you have a picnic, mm. you can't just get subs. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. If you yeah. have a McDonald's corporate picnic, you can't just like you know what I love this time pizza. Sure. No, absolutely not. Well, okay, hold on. This is McDonald's pizza. Don't don't tease me with the McPizza, please. Can we please go to the money zone? I'm there already. Look around you. I I have changed the walls in every direction that you're not looking. Until finally you spin wildly and notice that you've been in the money zone for hours. Our first sponsor this week is stamps.com. You can get everything you want on demand. Podcasts, little lebbies. That's if you if you work there, of course. I'm serious. <laughs> I don't think you can get little Debbie's on demand if you work at Little Debbie, Justin. Stop punching think... me, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> not not any. It comes little through Debbie. pneumatic tubes. You pu you pull a lever and one blasts out of a pneumatic tube into your mouth and you take whatever you get and you love it. Because they're all great. Um, except peanut butter bars, I'm not crazy about. Whoa! You can get postage on demand, 
and then mail the little Debbie home to your family. But that is a violation of company policy, and you will be terminated mm-hmm. if caught. With Stamps.com, you can access all the amazing services of the post office, except for looking at wanted posters, because they don't do that anymore. <laughs> And I asked, you could buy and print official U.S. postage for any letter, any package using your own computer and printer, and the mail carrier picks it up, which seems like a feature until you realize they come to your house every day, and it would be wild if they weren't like, I'll take this. It's nice. It's nice. It's a nice feature, but just like mail is nice. Right now, you can use my brother, all one word. For this special offer, it's a code, my brother, for this special offer, it includes up to $55 of free postage, a digital scale, and a four-week trial. So don't wait. Go to stamps.com before you do anything else. Click on the radio microphone at the top of the homepage and type my brother. That's stamps.com. Click the microphone and then enter my brother. Boy, I just don't ever want to say enter my brother. (laughs) If I could just avoid that. Exact phrasing, it would be great. Thank you. Do you think that right now there is like an executive from stance.com calling little Debbie and like, hey, could you pay for part of this ad that we did? Because a lot of it was about you. <laughs> and if you could just uh, kick in like 20, 30%, that would be great. That'd be awesome. Uh, hey, I want to tell you about Quip. Quip is great. They make uh, really great toothbrushes. I, uh, I I recently picked one up a couple months ago and have been brushing with it, and it's so nice. I really like uh, traveling with it. Uh, I think we've talked about this before. It's got this uh, like case that you can stick onto your mirror, uh, and you can pop it off at, at any time. I thought like because you could stick it on and pop it off, like it wouldn't stick after a while, but it's it just keeps sticking, and it's amazing. But then you can take that case and just like put the toothbrush inside it and it's an easy travel case it's awesome um their sonic vibrations are designed to be gentle enough for sensitive gums uh and quip toothbrushes run for three months on one charge uh also brush heads are automatically delivered on a dentist recommended schedule every three months for just five bucks so you can get the brush that is backed by over 20,000 dental professionals. Quip starts at just $25, and if you go to getquip.com slash mybrother right now, you can get your first refill pack for free with a Quip electric toothbrush. That's your first refill pack free at G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash mybrother. I have a Jumbotron, and it's from Anna, and it's for Alex Slater. Sweetest greetings to my best friend ever. Our traveling shenanigans have evolved from getting lost on our way to see Star Trek to unforgettable cross-country road trips. Here's to a lifetime of great stories and adventures to come. I'm so proud of the beautiful scarlet-haired warrior woman you will always be. Love you. That's nice. Hmm. What's wrong, Griffin? I'm just more of a Star Wars guy, I guess. I hate, uh, I hate, Uh, I love Star Wars so much with all of the cool lightsabers and, um... And you're really one of the architects of that world I, if you i'm one of the it. architects yeah so when they jump you in george says no he says no more star trek okay boy and mm-hmm. i said um i said okay dad justin you want to read the next one uh it would be i it would be my great honor this is a message for claire or v and fiona or janice or yanis probably janice it's from, Janus. Or Janus. Uh, well, it's from Emily, your DM and best friend. Thank you both so much for playing D&D with me, for partying with me in the center of one of the most niche Venn diagrams ever, and for the incredible friendship we share that's helped me through the past few whacked, tumultuous years of my life. 2015 may be over. Oops. But I'm so glad that the three of us are still to get, uh, together enjoying the long, long grift. I love you. <laughs> I, now, Justin, I, I'm... <laughs> Okay, I understand. <laughs> I understand what happened. We've done bad before, but I don't think we've done three and a half years bad before. I understand what happened now. Welcome, everyone, to the live wrestling spectacular in Los Angeles. So far, the world's most boring wrestling podcast has been destroying the competition. Isn't there anyone who can save us from this travesty? Wait, could it be? It's Tights and Fights, the perfect wrestling podcast. Tights and Fights is here to save us from the monotony of boring wrestling podcasts with hilarious conversations. Woke trips through the history of wrestling. And joke about the finer points of people wearing spandex. What a 
What a match! And the Tights and Fights podcast will be back every week. Thursdays on MaximumFun.org or wherever you get podcasts. Please, these hosts have families. Tights and Fights podcast. Tights and Fights. Hey, how about a Yahoo? Um, Sure. Uh, this one was sent in by Michelle Smith. Thank you, Michelle. It's Yahoo Answers user Andrew. It's Jermaine to um, what we were talking about earlier. Andrew asks, which do you like better, horses or camels? Mm. Um, keep in mind while we talk about this that horses are completely over and we need something like a new joke i guess uh andrew says the reason why i like camels more than horses is because if one treats it right one is actually safer around a camel than a horse camels are smarter than horses it is better than horses at perceiving threats the trade-off is that the camel is more powerful animal and it's bigger and harder to mount to ride and likes to mess with and try to eat hair and it won't be around you if you mistreat it just one time. And then the camel will be a dangerous animal to be around. But compared to being kicked by a horse, it's not that bad of trade-off. The camel also has a way more efficient stride. Okay. But also camels are harder to sit on. Mm. It depends, because I bet you could find a groove that perfectly matches your grundle. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Jelly bean? Mm-hmm. Hmm. There's a perfect, there's a perfect, horses are all cookie cutter, except for some of these fucking awful, awful horses I found on Craigslist, just these little mutants. Um, But there's probably, you know, no two camels are the same. And so there's probably one out there that like, if a tailor perfectly measured my, my Gujar, then it could find a camel that perfectly matched the the dimensions of said Gujar. Like how a wand chooses the wizard in Harry it's Potter. It's exactly like that. I want to go to Ollivander's Gujar measuring camel provider uh-huh. outfitter. Camels. And what's wrong, Juice? They and they sell cigarettes to kids, and <laughs> <laughs> and horses are beautiful. And there's not any comparison. They're lucky they have four legs because otherwise people would never mention them in the same breath as horses. Well, okay. I guess we know where Here, Justin stands. Here's two words for you. Equine. Ooh. Here's another word. Dromedary. Huh? The second one sounds like a fart of words. And the equine sounds like a a, 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 a lute player took a unicorn hair and plucked the finest note possible, is what equine sounds like. And I think, yeah, no thanks. Okay. All right, ask and answer. Next question. Got him. We got him. Uh, I have a quick. Um. Uh. I. So I've been wanting to develop a segment that's sort of like Munch Squad Junior, where right. I don't necessarily do the song and interrupt the show, but I just mentioned some <laughs> hot headlines, <laughs> some quick headlines, and I okay. just wanted to mention this quick headline. This is so. This is Munch Squad Junior. <laughs> oh yeah! Cool. Okay. So here's there's a new sa- there's a salad chain that's on the cusp of it just blowing up. Can you make a sound effect of you skateboarding up? Like I don't know what that sounds like, but you skateboarding up for Munch Squad Junior. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Munch Squad Junior. Oh, don't don't skateboard away. Come back, <laughs> Munch Squad Junior. Oh no, he left. Oh, I liked him. I'm back. Oh yeah! Now you have to do it all in that voice. Okay. Now tell me the good. Tell me the good news. I just it's just one thing that I wanted to let you all know. There's an Oklahoma-based salad chain it's blowing up. They got Robert Lee at the helm, CEO. Just made a new leadership hire. It's Todd Madliner. Uh, he's going to be the VP of operations, coming over from Red Robin after 20 years. And the name of this chain is Cool Greens. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. And it's one word and it doesn't sound real, but it's cool greens. And Todd says, I am very excited about the opportunity with cool greens. And get back <laughs> into an underserved segment of fast casual dining. The salad segment, says Madeline. There are burger and pizza joints at every corner, while the salad and healthy concepts are underserved in the US. I wonder why, Todd. 
Cool Greens <laughs> gives me a chance to get back into the segment and offer something different to franchisees looking to diversify their business portfolio or want to join the growing, healthy, fast, casual segment. And that restaurant, again, is called Go. Cool Greens. Cool, um, cool, cool <clears throat> greens. I just, cool greens. There's no way, bud. The The only way that greens become cool as a brand is if you sold salads that did have tokens for Chuck E. Cheese arcade games <laughs> scattered like that was the top. It was croutons and some feta and a little bit of cranberry and tokens that you could use to play arcade games at David Buster's. <laughs> Here's your salad. It's got uh, we've got croutons and we've got raisins and we've got Fresh Prince of Bel Air trading cards and they're right mm-hmm. and they're right Shredded. in there. Shredded right <laughs> up. We got um, we got baby spinach. We've got little chunks of fresh uh, fresh fresh Granny Smith apple and little codes for Fortnite skins. Kids, <laughs> come on into the cool greens. We. Uh, know where to buy drugs. Someday historians will look back on this bit and note the uh, how f- how easily we could summon up things that are cool and how hard we stumbled and fought to come up with salad ingredients. <laughs> <laughs> I did hear raisins in there. I think raisins is hey, can, a, it's a thing, but it's like not. Raisins, if the bit yeah. is like salad things, there is yeah. a list of about a hundred different. <laughs> Things. Yeah, sure. I, no, don't get me wrong. Raisins is not not a salad thing, <laughs> but it, I wouldn't put it in the top ten. We, yeah. we could have had carrots or cucumbers or tomatoes, but we went with raisins. Survey yes. says, oh, didn't make it on the board. This, this salad's got um, uh, uh, scrambled eggs and uh, 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 hot hot dog slices and uh, cool pictures of Spider Man. <laughs> 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 Uh, how about another question, though? Uh, yeah, I'd love that. Now I'm looking at all these salads and getting hungry for salad. Mm-hmm. You know how it goes for people like me. I work at a toy store that sells... That was a weird way of saying toy store. I work at a toy store that sells a variety of objects, including small, colorful rocks and gems. The other day, an older man came up to me in the store with a panicked look in his eyes. He ran up to me, dropped a giant wad of cash from the table, and said, I have $150. How many rocks can I get? Due to this totaling out to a substantial amount of rocks, I had to grab my manager to help with the transaction. But when I came back, he was gone. If he comes back, what should I do in this situation? Why does he need so many rocks? I'm deeply concerned about this situation, brothers, and I really need some clarity. Yeah, uh, that's from Ill Fated Encounter in Idaho, and it's a it is it is for a slingshot fight. Oh, I was going yeah. to say time traveler. Time traveler does need rocks for the future. We've run out of rocks. Uh, we <laughs> did Mars too needs, many slingshot Mars needs fights. Rocks. <laughs> Mars needs rocks, and um, we did too many slingshot fights. We ran out, shot them all up, and they got out of out into space and. Um, why do you need so many rocks? 150 rocks, $150 worth of rocks is probably a lot of rocks, eh? A great deal of rocks. Um, maybe not like at a toy store. You could probably get a better sort of rock per dollar at, you know, a, at a Home Depot or like a, the old quarry. Um, fuck that. At the quarry, you don't even need $150. Just go and take some rocks, bud. <laughs> but those, ro- aren't pre- those aren't prestige rocks, Griffin. Mm-hmm. Those yeah. are just dirty rocks. There has to be something about how prestigious these rocks are. I like the only thing I can imagine is this old man was at a party and said, I bet you all I have $150 worth of rocks. And they said, No way, Gene. And yeah. then he was like, uh, uh, I'll be right back. Because he was oh, hoisted on his own petard. You're, su- you're suggesting he's been maybe turned away from every other rock store in the county. Mm-hmm. And found out that they do have rocks at the toy store. They've blocked him at the quarry. They've blocked him at the Home Depot. And this is it for me. If you can't help me out, nobody can. The way I understand this question is that the old man left without buying the rocks. Is that how you all understand this question to have happened? Yes. yes. That's terrible. <laughs> That's a terrible thing. <laughs> That's so many rocks. This person says, how should I handle this situation in the future? You sh- if this old man comes back, you should throw those rocks at him and say, hey, Jerkwad, they don't pay me enough to haul these rocks around the store. I'm not a big buff 
rock hauling guy. I'm well, like, well, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. They might be. Okay. They might be big and jacked and crazy strong. So like Big they, Debbie. Oh they my been God. What if the old man's big bet was, I bet that that clerk can carry $150 worth of rocks and gems. Ah, uh, that old bar bet. The old bar, the oldest one in the book. I bet that, that person classic. can carry $150 worth of gems and rocks. The only thing I can assume is that this person, this old man, needed these rocks for some nefarious purpose. Otherwise, when you said, I have to go get my manager, then old man must have thought, like, ah, the jig is up, and, like, run out of the store. Oh, they probably robbed you. Oh, yeah, what? right. Okay, they robbed yeah. you. I need to buy $150 worth of rocks. Can you run a quick calculation? Oh, you got to talk to your manager? Yeah, go ahead and head to the back room. I'll wait. Smash, grab, loot, 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 steal, 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 take, 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 mine, mine, mine. Bye bye. What, what do you think old man Jean took, Griffin? Um hundreds of dollars? Why are you suggest because he's because he's aged, he 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 stole he stole a bunch of checkers sets, Trav. No, he took no. The fucking he took cold hard cash, bud. I was just going to say maybe he took some rocks. I didn't realize he you were talking about He did steal some rocks on the side. He said, you know, now that I've said that, I know it was a ruse, but I, I would actually like some cool rocks. Um, I do I do like rocks. I do enjoy. My nephew loves rocks. My um, nephew loves these things. So this is going to be a gift for him. The $1,200 is a gift for me uh, for the drug party I'm having tonight. <laughs> uh, giant fish tank, maybe. Maybe he was like, I gotta buy a giant fish tank. And it was, and then like halfway through, he's like, I'll never, I travel too much. Who's gonna feed these fish? <laughs> anyway, mm. I'll just leave these rocks here. I have other things to do. I don't know why he'd be panicked though if he needed to fill up a giant fish tank. He had the fish were. He had a date coming over, and the, the guy that was uh, coming over loved fish. Okay. And he was like, I, oh, my tank, it's a big one. <laughs> Let me just put it, I don't want to get into cubic footage, but uh, it's oh. a big tank, so. Or maybe the fish were already in the tank, and before he could put the water in there, obviously you got to put the rocks in. Yes. So time is time is of, <laughs> of the essence. And then it took so long, he's like, well, they're probably dead. <laughs> they're dead now. <laughs> they're dead now. I'm going to go home and start again. There's no way I'll impress that date now. Unless he likes dead fish. <laughs> Unless he likes dead beta fish. <laughs> does he just like the idea of fish? Does he have to see them swimming around? We'll see. Uh, help me, brothers. I really have to have a Tuesday. What? Like a, a number two. Uh, it has to poop. Oh, I don't. You got any other ones? <laughs> No, look at all this too. This is this is like Pee Wee Herman not wanting to get the snakes out of the pet shop. Come on, bud. All right, let's get the snakes out of the pet shop. But everyone in the office has already seen me walk across the room, go into the bathroom, see the one stall is occupied, and just walk back to my desk twice. The walls are closing in on me. Do I risk my third hurried walk to the lavatory through the thicket of judgmental glances from my coworkers? What's the play, Gmail? What? Okay. What's your other option other than risking the hurried walk to the lavatory? Like, yeah, do you want us to look you in the email and say poop your pants? Because we're not going to do it. It's not going to happen. Not here, friendo. It's, I mean, you fucked up by not having a, a dead drop location. I mm -hmm. always have a fucking dead drop location. <laughs> I always do. Are you kidding me? I was in the HEB, and I had to use the restroom quite badly, and I went in the restroom, and somebody was in there. I waited two minutes. They were still in there, and so I knew to just walk outside, go to the Thai restaurant next door, and blast off in there, and then come back to <laughs> HEB, get my shopping done. You've got to have a dead drop everywhere. Are you fucking new? You've got to have a dead drop. <laughs> It also helps if you tie some kind of bell or something to the bathroom mm -hmm. door, mm -hmm. so that way you can hear someone come in and out, and then you can wait the appropriate 45 seconds to a minute, walk over casually like, I might as well check, see if anyone's in here. Oh, empty, I could go. Like, I, and make a real cash yeah. kind of thing. I've had to do this with, uh, you know, with Rachel sometimes, and with, uh, like, one of you two, if we've, like, stayed together in a hotel while we're on tour, this idea of you're in the bathroom, maybe taking a shower, maybe using the bathroom, and I really have to do it, and then I, 
um, you know, call out. I plead uh, to you. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! I really, really, I'm, I'm so sorry. I know I don't want to be pushy, but I really need to get up in. Um, I've never, I don't think, done that with a stranger. But I'm wondering if maybe that's like, it's a common enough human experience that if a stranger did it to me, I would, I, I would, I would, I would blast off as fast as I could. could you, you know? could you just wander in and out, just saying stuff like? Just like, I, where are my damn glasses? <laughs> I, gosh, gosh darn it, I really want to find my glasses. Man alive, I can't believe it. Darn the luck. And you just keep going in and out. like, And it's like the door's closed, so you can't go in where you think you left the glass. I am almost positive I left my darn glasses right in the dang commode. And I just need to get in there and look around. I bet they're in there. And that, yeah. that's why you keep ducking in and out, because you've been looking for your darn glasses. Oh, and now we're, have them in your pocket, so when you finally use the bathroom, you come out like, found them. Found them. But you're going to be walking different. Everybody's going to know. That's why I think you should just be like, I got to blast off my ass, and somebody's <laughs> been in there the whole time, gang. And some they'll look at you and be like, I know that feel, partner. <laughs> it is pretty universal. If somebody said like, hey, the reason I keep checking the bathroom is because I need to use it, and there's someone in there, I'd be like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, partner, I know that feel. <laughs> We've literally all been there. Yeah, uh, why are you announcing it? Like, why are you... Yeah, that's fine. We're all just people. We yeah. get it. We get it. My 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 face win. I also have to blast off my ass, but someone's in the stall. <laughs> Shoot. Is that, what the, is that what the problem is? Is that what the problem is? Because it's like... I was thinking about this on an airplane. They tell you not to pile up, not to, like, line up near the door, but you can't call dibsies. And if you stood mm -hmm. up and said, like, I need to do this... It, Someone else in the plane might also say, like, yeah, me too. And I guess we're just going to have a foot race, aren't we? Because this is how it's going to shake out. If you if you announce that you have to use the bathroom, aren't you running the risk of somebody else being like, well, yeah, me too. Now that you mentioned it. Yeah. I'd love I'd love one right now. I love that. <laughs> When we were on the plane uh, this weekend, I like I was sitting next to Teresa and I went to stand up and she said, Oh, they they asked people not to like congregate around the door, and I was like, I know, but I'm standing up to establish like I'm next. Yeah, like, you can't put you can't put your fucking quarter up on the 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 airplane bathroom door. This is a gross way to end the show. Maybe. No, I think it's a powerful way. Now, can we talk about like a smart thing for like two seconds? Uh, um, sci science. <laughs> <laughs> Munch Squad Junior! <laughs> oh, there's another one. That's the great thing about Munch Squad Junior is you can fit a bunch of them in uh, uh, in in a in a given episode. I, I just wanted to mention this is uh, again fa fall is here, and uh, another sign of the times that I just wanted to point to real quick is that uh, Dairy Queen has launched their um, <clears throat> their autumnal menu. Uh, and uh, the fall blizzards are here, folks. And uh, new this month, Dairy Queen Snickerdoodle Cookie Dough Blizzard Treat, which has wow, you know, cookies and cinnamon and sugar and vanilla sauce. Um, one that I'm not crazy about that kind of actually, frankly, um, it bothers me a little bit is uh the hot the Oreo hot cocoa Blizzard Treat. A mix of Oreo cookie pieces and rich cocoa fudge hand blended with creamy vanilla soft serve that's finished with a whipped topping. And I just, it, it says from the, the quote from Maria uh, Hokinson, who's the executive veep of marketing over there, set over at Berkshire Hathaway, <laughs> the holding company that owns Dairy Queen. <laughs> mm -mm. Set, mm. Yum, yum. Who's yeah. hungry? <laughs> <laughs> From putting a unique twist on a treat that blends hot and cold in our Oreo hot cocoa blizzard treat. But <laughs> the thing is you didn't. <laughs> and the thing is that it says hot in there and you didn't. And you didn't and you're yeah. lying. And it's just really bothers me because there's nothing hot about it. It's just, it's just, you just lied. <laughs> and it's yeah. really bothers me. That's just cocoa. Yeah, it's just have, cocoa. There's no intervention there. They've got, intervention's a great word. They actually do have little sheets of plastic separating the hot fudge from the, it's like little pockets that's protected. They have these insular sort of pockets of hot fudge. And you do need to watch out because that, that plastic, oh boy, it's a toxic one. My brother, is, <laughs> my brother's one of the great minds of our time, Dairy Queen, and he's having a lot of fun. And But you can have that idea. It's better than what you posted up, which was lying. It's nothing. 
It's nothing. You can't call it a hot cocoa treat just for like fun, just to lie because it makes you feel strong. I don't understand because you want to be better than Cold Stone. I don't fucking get it. It sucks. It makes me really angry. Anyway, Dairy Queen, Berkshire Hathaway. I still love y'all. Pumpkin Pie Blizzard. You know I'll be in for one of those. No question. Uh, but that's that's uh, that's what's happening for the Fall Blizzards. Uh, folks, thank you so much for enjoying our uh, program. Uh, we hope you had a great time. Uh, I want, <laughs> I want to personally. You sound like a normal human, Justin. Just how people doing hope you do. I would like to ask you. This is the last episode. I'm going to get a chance to ask you to do this, but um, uh, if you could please uh, pre-order the Sawbones book, bit.ly forward slash the Sawbones book. I, I wrote it with my wife and it was really hard and uh, our publisher got sold to another company right when the book came out. So we're kind of doing this on our own, kind of get trying to get people to buy it. So if you would buy it, <laughs> it would just be the tops. It would just mean the world to me if you'd go to bit.ly forward slash the Sawbones book and pre-order that book. It comes out tomorrow, October 9th. Or go to your bookstore and buy it there. That's great too if you, if you want to do that. But uh, I just really appreciate it, and uh, thank you so much. Um, we also we have shows coming up in uh, Denver and in Austin. You can get those tickets at macroyshows.com slash tours. Um, I want to thank John Roderick and the Long Winters for the use of our theme song. It's a departure off the album, Putting the Days to Bed, which is so good. And thank you again, John, for um, for playing us, playing us in in Seattle. That was awesome. Uh, and for once, I don't have a million things to plug, so... Awesome. We're good. Yeah, we're uh, thank, go. I, I, we can thank Max Fun for having us. Thanks, Maximum Fun, for having us on the network. Go to MaximumFun.org. Check out all the great shows there, like uh, Story Break or Stop Podcasting Yourself or Switchblade Sisters or whatever on MaximumFun.org. Uh, our shit's at MacRoyShows.com. Do you want to f- wrap oh, it up? Oh, wait. We do have one thing. We got a new pen. The pen of the month is the Great Job pen. Oh, yeah. It's so good. Um, available at MacRoyMerch.com. And the, the Macroy part of those proceeds are going to help rebuild Puerto Rico. So you can go to MacroyMerch.com and check out that great job. You pen. only have it to the end of the month to do it, so don't sleep. Uh, here's the final Yahoo. It was sent in by a few folks. Thank you, everyone. It's from Yahoo Answers user Alexandra, who asks, what's a better name for a moth, Timothy or Peter? <laughs> my name is Justin Macroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. My brother, my brother, me. Kiss your dad square on the lips. Maximumfun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. Are you tired of trying to keep up with the news cycle? Is bad stuff happening too fast for you to process? Don't you wish there was an easy way to find out about only the most important info you need? Hi, we're Lisa. (laughs) And Emily. (laughs) Why don't you try our podcast, Baby Geniuses? On each episode of our podcast, we discuss a weird Wikipedia page such as Flatulence Humor, Clamato, Catalan Witches, Slippy the Microsoft Office Helper, Death During Consensual Sex, and The Talking Mongoose. We ask each other stupid questions. Uh, <laughs> if you <laughs> if you got a packet with like 300 seeds in it, what kind of plant would you choose the seeds to be? <laughs> 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 that felt like you were assigned to ask me a question and there were certain words you weren't allowed to use. We talk about Martha Stewart, her pony, and other celebrity horse news. Ben Chunch. Every other week on Maximum Fun. Baby Geniuses. Baby Geniuses. Baby Geniuses. Baby Geniuses. Baby Geniuses. Baby Geniuses.